Hey everyone! Welcome to another Stonehearth Desktop Tuesday! Alpha 19 is going strong with new treats for Rise children, but last August I also mentioned that the team will be working on some long-term projects as well, which won't land for a while. All the same, we think you'll still be interested, so for this week's Desktop Tuesday, let's wind back up to 10,000 feet and return to a topic we started discussing earlier this year, how to depict the edge of the world. You may remember that when we last left off, Ali was looking at three different models for the edge of the world. Direct representation, like surrounding the edge of the world with clouds. Abstract, like making it clear that the world was conceptually a storybook or map. Or lore-related, like floating islands in the sky or water. In the end, she decided to pursue this second one, abstraction, because it spoke to the whole team and to many of you, as hearthlings have a very physical, tangible interaction with the world around them, buildings built in reachable pieces and logs that fall from trees and that are turned into chairs. Seeing the world of hearth as a map or a book explains how it relates to us, the player. It is literally a world inside a book on our bookcase or a group of people on a map sitting on my desk. Ali's first exercise was to see if she could solve what she called the problem of the spine. In this picture, the land rises out of the book, but what happens at the spine of the world? What would it look like in-game? She did this mock-up, but felt it was very unsatisfying somehow, like a block sitting on top of a book. That's not what she wanted, so she tried experimenting with this model, which breaks the edges of the book up, as if the world were spilling down onto the covers. We think it looks pretty amazing! One problem is this. What happens when it's not a gorgeous waterfall edge? What would it mean about all the lands around the section that you choose to settle in? These are open questions, and we are still debating them. We were also, as a team, very excited about the possibility of the world being depicted inside a map, or on perhaps a book of maps. This could neatly solve the spine problem by just keeping the game space on one side of the page, and putting the other stuff, like the storybook that frames the game, on the other side. Theoretically, we could customize it by kingdom, or based on what's happened in the game. If it became too distracting, we could instead hide it. The problem with this abstraction is that it might start to look weird when the player is digging. If the map is a book of maps and you dig down, what does that mean for the maps on the other pages? Also, exactly what should happen if you get to the edge of the world and dig down? Again, these are more open questions that want further ideation. One thing Ali did like very much about the map concept was the idea that perhaps the unexplored or recently not visited parts of the map could return to being flat, with hand-drawn elements depicting what we think might be over there, the way old maps have scenes like, here there be dragons. The problem with this, though incredibly evocative, would be that a ton of art would be required every time we added something new to the game, not just its model, but also an illustration as to how it might appear on the map. A picture derived from the voxels might work, and would be easier to mod in, but would be clearly less evocative. As usual, trade-offs. The final exploration Ali did in this iteration was about answering where exactly the book ended and the rest of the world began. Like, how far above the book does the sky reach? If you're inside the book and looking out toward the edge, what would you see? These questions, as you might imagine, are beyond the scope of an illustration. They require mock-ups, with a real in-game camera to pursue. So that's where her explorations of this artistic question come to rest for now, with strong indication as to how we would like the game to look, strong enough to begin in-game code explorations. These explorations would then show the rest of the pros and cons of each approach, and also unveil usability and style issues we probably haven't even thought of yet. Stay tuned! To be fair, though, these explorations probably won't happen for quite some time, as all of our engineers are currently engaged with performance work, more pressing gameplay features, and ongoing bug fixing. In the meantime, Ali will take the work she's done here and use it as the foundation for other, long-term, artistic visioning projects. And that's it for this week! Being transparent with you about how our development process is going is really important to us, and so I hope you've enjoyed seeing how Ali's Edge of the World concepting has evolved. If you have ideas as to how to answer the outstanding questions I've mentioned, let us know here in the comments or on our forum at discourse.stonehearth.net. Oh, and one more thing. It may be that an upcoming, more technical Desktop Tuesday turns out to be more suitable as a written document than a video. If Tuesday happens and you don't see a video from us, check out our dev blog at stonehearth.net. It may be there, in text alone, instead. Either way, see you next week.